Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the English Hustle podcast. I'm Alex. And I'm Maria. We're so glad you could join us today. In today's episode, we'll be diving into the topic of effective problem-solving skills. We'll explore what problem solving is, why it's important, and share various strategies and techniques to tackle problems efficiently. We'll also discuss common barriers to problem solving, walk you through a step-by-step -step process for solving problems, and share some real-life examples and success stories to inspire you. To kick things off, Let's share a bit about our own experiences with problem solving. Maria, do you have a story you'd like to start with? Absolutely. A few years ago, I was managing a project at work that suddenly faced a significant budget cut. It felt like an insurmountable problem at first. However, instead of panicking, I gathered my team and we brainstormed alternative solutions. We identified areas where we could reduce costs without compromising the project's quality. By reallocating resources and seeking out additional funding sources, we managed to complete the project successfully. This experience taught me the importance of staying calm, gathering input from others, and being flexible in problem solving. That's a great example, Maria. For me, it was during my university days. I was struggling with a major research project and was feeling overwhelmed by the amount of data I had to analyze. I decided to break the task into smaller, more manageable steps and set specific goals for each day. Additionally, I sought help from my professors and peers who provided valuable insights and feedback. This approach not only helped me complete the project on time, but also improved the quality of my work significantly. It reinforced the importance of breaking down problems and seeking support when needed. Segment 2. Understanding. Problem Solving. So what exactly is problem solving? At its core, problem solving is the process of identifying a problem developing possible solutions, and taking the necessary steps to resolve it. It's a fundamental skill that we use every day, whether we're aware of it or not. Absolutely, Maria. Effective problem solving is crucial in both personal and professional contexts. In our personal lives, it helps us navigate challenges like managing finances, resolving conflicts, or planning for the future. In a professional setting, strong problem-solving skills can lead to better decision-making, increased efficiency, and improved outcomes for projects and teams. Let's break down the core elements of problem-solving. The first element is critical thinking. This involves analyzing the problem, identifying the root cause, and evaluating the potential solutions. It's about being logical and objective, rather than letting emotions cloud your judgment. The second element is creativity. Creativity allows us to think outside the box and come up with innovative solutions that might not be immediately obvious. It's especially important when dealing with complex or unprecedented problems. Then there's decision making. Once you have identified potential solutions, you need to make a decision on which one to implement. This involves weighing the pros and cons of each option, considering the potential outcomes, and making a choice that aligns with your goals and values. Another essential element is persistence. Not every solution will work the first time, and setbacks are inevitable. Persistence means staying committed to finding a solution, even when things get tough. It's about learning from failures and continuously improving your approach. Lastly, 
communication plays a vital role in problem solving. Whether you're working alone or in a team, clear and effective communication is necessary to ensure everyone understands the problem, the proposed solutions, and the steps needed to implement them. Segment 3. Common Problem Solving Strategies Analytical Methods When it comes to problem solving, there are several analytical methods that can help break down and understand the problem more effectively. One such method is the SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. This analysis helps you identify internal and external factors that can influence the problem or the potential solutions. That's right, Alex. For instance, if you're facing a challenge at work, you can use SWOT analysis to identify your team's strengths, acknowledge the weaknesses, look for opportunities to leverage your strengths, and be aware of potential threats that could hinder your progress. It's a comprehensive way to get a clear picture of the situation. Another valuable method is root cause analysis. This technique helps you identify the underlying cause of a problem rather than just addressing the symptoms. One common tool used in root cause analysis is the five whys technique. You keep asking why until you get to the root of the problem. For example, if a project deadline is missed, you might ask, why was the deadline missed? The answer might be, because the team was behind schedule. Then you ask, why was the team behind schedule? And continue this process until you uncover the root cause, such as inadequate planning or resource allocation. Creative techniques. Now, let's talk about some creative techniques that can spark innovative solutions. Brainstorming is one of the most popular methods. It involves gathering a group of people to generate as many ideas as possible without judging or evaluating them initially. The goal is to encourage free thinking and open discussion. Exactly. During a brainstorming session, every idea is welcome, no matter how outlandish it may seem. This can lead to unique and creative solutions that might not have been considered otherwise. Another effective technique is mind mapping. This involves creating a visual representation of the problem and its related ideas, making it easier to see connections and generate new ideas. Mind mapping starts with writing the main problem in the center of a page and then branching out with related ideas and subproblems. It's a great way to organize thoughts and see the bigger picture. Another creative technique is the SCAMPER method, which stands for Substitute, Combine, Adapt, Modify, Put to another use, Eliminate and Reverse. Scamper is a structured way to think about how you can transform or improve an existing idea or product. For example, if you're trying to improve a product, you might ask, what can I substitute to make it better? Or, how can I combine it with something else? This method encourages you to look at the problem from different angles and consider various possibilities. In summary, using analytical methods like SWOT analysis and root cause analysis can help you understand the problem deeply and develop informed solutions. On the other hand, creative techniques like brainstorming, mind mapping and the SCAMPER method can spark innovative ideas and new perspectives. By combining these approaches, you can tackle problems more effectively and come up with well-rounded solutions. The key is to be open to both logical analysis and creative thinking. Segment 4. Barriers to Effective Problem Solving Internal Barriers 
While we've discussed various strategies for effective problem solving, it's also important to recognise the barriers that can hinder this process. Let's start with internal barriers. One significant internal barrier is cognitive biases. These are systematic ways in which our thinking deviates from rationality, affecting our decisions and judgments. A common cognitive bias is confirmation bias, where we tend to favor information that confirms our existing beliefs and ignore information that contradicts them. This can prevent us from seeing the full picture and considering alternative solutions. Another internal barrier is stress. When we're stressed, our ability to think clearly and make rational decisions is compromised. Stress can lead to tunnel vision, where we focus only on immediate concerns and overlook long-term solutions. Lack of confidence is also a major barrier. If we doubt our ability to solve a problem, we're less likely to take proactive steps to address it. This can lead to avoidance behavior, where we put off dealing with the problem altogether, making it worse over time. External barriers. Now let's talk about external barriers. One of the most common external barriers is resource constraints. This includes limited time, money or personnel to address the problem effectively. Without adequate resources, even the best solutions can be difficult to implement. Organizational culture can also pose a barrier. In some workplaces, there might be a culture that discourages risk-taking or punishes failure, which can stifle creative problem-solving. If employees fear repercussions for suggesting unconventional solutions, they're less likely to propose innovative ideas. Time pressure is another significant external barrier. When there's a tight deadline, the pressure to solve the problem quickly can lead to rushed decisions and oversight of important details. This can result in solutions that are not well thought out and may not address the root cause of the problem. Additionally, a lack of support from leadership or colleagues can impede problem-solving efforts. Without a supportive environment, individuals may feel isolated in their efforts and less motivated to find effective solutions. To sum up, both internal and external barriers can significantly impact our ability to solve problems effectively. Internal barriers like cognitive biases, stress and lack of confidence can cloud our judgment and hinder proactive action. Meanwhile, external barriers such as resource constraints, organizational culture and time pressure can limit our options and discourage innovative thinking. Being aware of these barriers is the first step to overcoming them. Segment 5. Steps for Effective Problem Solving Step-by-step -step process. Number 1. Identifying the problem. The first step in any problem-solving process is to clearly identify the problem. This means understanding what the issue is and defining it accurately. Take the time to look at the problem from different angles and make sure you're addressing the root cause, not just the symptoms. Practical Tip Ask yourself questions like, what is the problem? Why is it a problem? And who is affected by this problem? Write down your thoughts to have a clear picture. Number two, gathering information. Once you've identified the problem, gather as much relevant information as possible. This involves collecting data, consulting with stakeholders, and doing research. The goal is to have a comprehensive understanding of the problem and the factors that contribute to it. Practical tip. 
Use various sources such as surveys, reports, interviews and observational data. Organise the information you collect to make it easier to analyse later. Number 3. Generating Potential Solutions Next, brainstorm potential solutions. At this stage, it's important to be open-minded and consider all possible options. Encourage creative thinking and avoid judging ideas too quickly. Practical tip. Use techniques like brainstorming sessions, mind mapping, or the scamper method we discussed earlier. Write down all ideas, no matter how unconventional they might seem. Number four, evaluating and selecting the best solution. After generating a list of potential solutions, evaluate each one based on feasibility, effectiveness, and potential impact. Consider the pros and cons of each option and how they align with your goals and constraints. Practical tip. Create a criteria checklist to compare solutions objectively. You might also use tools like SWOT analysis to weigh the strengths and weaknesses of each option. Number five, implementing the solution. Once you've selected the best solution, it's time to implement it. This involves planning and executing the steps needed to put the solution into action. Ensure that everyone involved understands their roles and responsibilities. Practical Tip Develop a detailed action plan with timelines and assign tasks to team members. Communicate clearly and regularly to keep everyone on the same page. Number six, reviewing the results and reflecting on the process. The final step is to review the results of the implemented solution. Assess whether the problem has been resolved and to what extent the solution was effective. Reflect on the process to learn from the experience and identify areas for improvement. Practical tip. Conduct a post-implementation review meeting. Gather feedback from all stakeholders and document what worked well and what didn't. Use these insights to refine your problem-solving approach for the future. To summarize, Effective problem solving involves a systematic approach, identifying the problem, gathering information, generating potential solutions, evaluating and selecting the best solution, implementing the solution, and reviewing the results. Remember to stay organized, be open to different perspectives, and communicate effectively throughout the process. These practical tips can help you tackle problems more efficiently and effectively in real-life situations. Segment 6. Real-life examples and case studies. Personal experiences. Let's dive into some personal experiences where our problem-solving skills came into play. Maria, do you want to start? Sure, Alex. One memorable experience for me was during a project at my previous job. We were facing a significant issue with declining customer satisfaction. Our initial surveys indicated multiple areas of dissatisfaction, but we weren't sure where to start. I decided to use root cause analysis to dig deeper. By repeatedly asking why and gathering more detailed feedback, we discovered that the primary issue was a lack of proper customer support. We then brainstormed several potential solutions, including better training for support staff, implementing a new CRM system, and creating a detailed FAQ section on our website. After evaluating these options, we decided to implement all three solutions in phases. This comprehensive approach not only improved customer satisfaction, but also boosted team morale. That's a great example, Maria. 
For me, it was during my time at university. I was working on a group project that was not progressing as planned. We were missing deadlines, and the quality of our work was suffering. I decided to apply a SWOT analysis to understand our strengths and weaknesses better. It turned out that our team had strong research skills but lacked organization and clear communication. By addressing these weaknesses, we restructured our workflow, set clear deadlines, and improved our communication channels. This strategic approach helped us complete the project successfully and on time. Success Stories Let's talk about some well-known success stories. One classic example is the story of Apple Inc. When Steve Jobs returned to Apple in 1997, the company was struggling with declining sales and a bloated product line. Jobs used problem-solving techniques to streamline operations and focus on innovation. He conducted a thorough analysis of the company's strengths and weaknesses and decided to simplify the product line, which allowed Apple to concentrate on creating groundbreaking products like the iMac, iPod and eventually the iPhone. This strategic focus not only saved Apple, but also transformed it into one of the most successful companies in the world. Another inspiring story is that of the airline industry's response to the 9-11 attacks. The immediate aftermath saw a significant drop in passenger numbers due to safety concerns. Airlines had to quickly adapt to the new reality and regain customer trust. Through a combination of enhanced security measures, transparent communication with passengers, and strategic pricing, the industry managed to bounce back. Airlines worked closely with government agencies to implement effective security protocols and reassured the public about the safety of air travel. This collaborative problem-solving effort was crucial in stabilizing and eventually revitalizing the industry. A more recent example is how many businesses adapted during the COVID-19 pandemic. Companies like Zoom saw unprecedented growth as they quickly scaled their services to meet the demand for remote communication tools. At the same time, restaurants and retail stores pivoted to online sales and delivery services. These businesses demonstrated remarkable problem-solving abilities by innovating and adapting to a rapidly changing environment. These examples show that effective problem-solving can lead to significant breakthroughs and success, whether it's on a personal level or within large organizations. By applying systematic approaches and being open to innovative solutions, we can overcome even the most challenging problems. In summary, both personal experiences and well-known success stories illustrate the power of effective problem solving. By using analytical methods and creative techniques, we can address complex issues and achieve our goals. Remember, whether it's in your personal life or professional career, the ability to solve problems effectively is a valuable skill that can lead to great success and satisfaction. Segment 7. Future Trends in Problem Solving the Emerging Techniques As we look to the future, there are several emerging techniques in problem solving that are gaining traction. One of these is design thinking. This method focuses on understanding the user experience and solving problems from the user's perspective. It emphasizes empathy, ideation, and experimentation. Design thinking encourages us to deeply understand the needs and challenges of the end users before developing solutions. It's a human-centered approach that involves iterative prototyping and testing. By continually refining ideas based on feedback, we can create more effective and user-friendly solutions. 
Another popular technique is Agile methodology, which is widely used in software development, but is also applicable in other fields. Agile emphasizes flexibility, collaboration, and rapid iteration. It breaks down projects into smaller, manageable tasks that can be completed in short cycles or sprints. Agile methodologies allow teams to quickly respond to changes and continuously improve their processes. By regularly reviewing progress and adjusting plans as needed, Agile ensures that the final product meets the user's needs and adapts to new information or challenges that arise during the project. Technological Impact Technology is also playing a significant role in shaping the future of problem solving. Artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning are revolutionizing how we approach complex problems. These technologies can analyze vast amounts of data, identify patterns, and suggest solutions much faster than humans can. For example, AI-powered tools can help businesses optimize their operations by predicting market trends, identifying inefficiencies, and recommending strategies for improvement. In healthcare, AI can assist in diagnosing diseases and developing personalized treatment plans based on patient data. Another exciting development is the use of big data analytics. With the ability to process and analyze massive data sets, organizations can gain deeper insights into their operations and customer behaviors. This data-driven approach enhances decision-making and problem-solving by providing evidence-based insights. Additionally, collaboration tools and platforms are transforming how teams solve problems. With remote work becoming more common, digital tools like project management software, communication apps, and virtual collaboration platforms enable teams to work together seamlessly, regardless of their physical location. Virtual reality, AVR, and augmented reality, SAR, are also emerging as powerful tools in problem solving. These technologies provide immersive experiences that can be used for training, simulations, and even brainstorming sessions, allowing teams to explore and test solutions in a virtual environment. In summary, the future of problem solving looks promising with the advent of new techniques and technologies. Design thinking and agile methodologies offer innovative approaches that emphasize flexibility, user centricity, and collaboration. Meanwhile, AI, machine learning, big data analytics, and digital collaboration tools are enhancing our ability to analyze problems, generate solutions, and work together effectively. By staying informed about these trends and incorporating them into our problem-solving processes, we can be better prepared to tackle future challenges. It's an exciting time for problem solving, and we encourage you to explore these emerging techniques and technologies to enhance your own skills and capabilities. Segment 8. Tips and Takeaways As we wrap up this episode, let's quickly recap the main points we discussed today about effective problem solving skills. We started with understanding what problem solving is and why it's important. We then moved on to common strategies, including analytical and creative techniques. We also covered the barriers to effective problem solving, both internal and external. After that, we outlined a step-by-step -step process for solving problems systematically. We shared real-life examples and case studies to illustrate these concepts in action, and we explored future trends in problem-solving, 
including emerging techniques and the impact of technology. Now, let's talk about some actionable tips to help you improve your problem-solving skills. First, always start by clearly defining the problem. Take the time to understand it fully before jumping to solutions. Second, gather as much information as you can. The more data you have, the better equipped you'll be to make informed decisions. Use a variety of sources and organize your findings to see the bigger picture. Third, be open to different perspectives. Involve others in the problem-solving process and encourage creative thinking. Brainstorming and mind mapping are great techniques to generate a wide range of potential solutions. Fourth, evaluate your options critically. Use tools like SWOT analysis to weigh the pros and cons of each solution. Choose the one that best fits your goals and constraints. Fifth, implement your solution with a clear action plan. Assign tasks, set deadlines, and communicate effectively with everyone involved. Regularly review your progress and be ready to adapt as needed. Finally, after implementing the solution, take the time to review the results. Reflect on what worked well and what didn't. Learn from the experience to improve your problem-solving process in the future. Remember, Problem solving is a skill that can be developed with practice and persistence. Don't be discouraged by setbacks or failures. Each challenge you face is an opportunity to grow and improve. Stay curious and keep learning. The more you expose yourself to new ideas and experiences, the better you'll become at solving problems. And most importantly, Believe in your ability to overcome obstacles and find solutions. We hope this episode has given you valuable insights and practical tips to enhance your problem-solving skills. Keep pushing forward, stay positive, and tackle your challenges head-on. Thank you for joining us today on the English Hustle podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with others who might find it helpful.